Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical and biochemical engineering professor from Missouri S&T. This video is for intermediate thermodynamics and it's looking at thermodynamic property calculations for real substances. Our goals out of this lesson is that you should learn to use differentials and partial derivatives to write expressions for changes in important thermodynamic properties and to use mathematical equivalencies to modify the resulting expressions in terms of measurable quantities. So first, just a reminder of the first law written as what we call the fundamental relation. Out of the first law, if we assume that the system is reversible, we're able to replace work with this negative PDV and TDS, become for our Q. And then we look at the system again and we realize that we've written an expression that does not involve any properties that are path dependent. And so therefore this is a generally valid expression. And we call this the fundamental relation. Now it's normally done for closed systems, but if you do it so that you include possibility of change in mass, or number of moles, then we end up with these extra little pieces here. And in terms of extensive properties, we're going to be adding the sum of the chemical potentials for each component times the change in the number of moles of those. Or we can do this on an intensive basis. And this is the fundamental relation, and it's incredibly useful as a tool for working with changes in properties. So what are some of the other energy functions that we know? We've been working with U and H. H is by definition, using three lines on that equal sign, U plus PV. For Helmholtz energy, we represent it with A and it is U minus TS, and Gibbs energy, G, is U minus TS plus PV. So we'd like to be able to first develop fundamental relations for these other energy functions, and we would like to be able to do things like Maxwell equations and other relationships taking advantage of what we can learn from these other energy functions. Let's look at these for internal energy U. Now we're going to do this for a pure substance. So therefore the fundamental relation is going to be DU equals TDS minus PDV plus mu dn. In this, the d's indicate what the set of independent variables are for the function u. So s, v, and n are the natural variables of u. Sometimes we'll write that u is a function of s, v, and n. The part that comes before the D, before the differentials, these are going to be, develop our equations of state. Now these are not the equations of state like say the uh, Suave Red Lake Quang or something like that, but these are another form of equations of state that you're maybe unaccustomed to dealing with. But in this case, the T in front of the DS, this is how U changes with S while holding V and N constant. Negative P is how U changes with V while holding S and N constant. And Mu is how U changes with N while holding S and V constant. So those subscripts are describing my path, my process path, and I now see the effect of changing any one of the natural variables. To develop Maxwell equations, we need to look at the second order mixed partials.
And I need every combination of those will get me a Maxwell equation. So the one that you're most accustomed to looking at is the pairing S and V. So for instance, how does ds du dv compare to ddv du ds? Well, from up above, I know that du dv is negative p, so this is dp, d negative p, ds. The path is holding constant v and n. And it should be equal to how du ds, which is t, how that changes with v, holding s and n constant. And this is a Maxwell equation. But it's not the only one. I also compare s and n, for instance. So d ds of du dn equals d dn of du ds. But
In the previous lesson, we had developed these mathematical rules, and we have a reciprocal rule, a triple product rule, and a second derivative rule. We use the second derivative rule to develop Maxwell equations. The triple product rule and the reciprocal rule we haven't really used yet. So let's start looking at how that combines with our Maxwell's. Now this is what most people consider the full set of Maxwell's. These are written on an intensive basis for a pure substance. So we don't have to worry about the N. Okay, no change in number of moles in this case. And so this is what you would get if you looked at each of the energy functions, all four of them. But what we want to do is we want to consider which of our variables are measurable. So I look at this and it's like P and T, volume, I can do those, I can measure those. But internal energy, enthalpy, I've got a whole bunch of these things that I really don't know how to measure. Okay. And worse than that, if I have something like H, it's a function of S and P, well, I can measure the P, but I can't measure the H. And if it's a, I mean, I can't measure the S. And if it's a function of it, how can I go any further? So what we want to do is we want to start looking at things in terms of measurable quantities, things so that we can actually evaluate what these various functions are. So we're going to use our math tricks, our definitions of fundamental relations, our Maxwell equations, and those math skills in order to come up with things that we actually can determine experimentally. So our measurable quantities pressure, volume, and temperature. But we can also measure C sub P or C sub V by looking at energy changes, heat transfer basically, through a constant pressure process or a constant volume process. And we can measure changes in volume as we change temperature or pressure. And these compressibilities, how volume changes with temperature or pressure, are things that are measurable and occasionally for some substances recorded. So this is going to be our list of measurable quantities. So we're going to want to translate changes in a now variable, so H for instance, um, into things that relate to just these quantities, things that we can measure. So let's look at H which in terms of natural variables for a pure, and we'll call it a closed system, is a function of S and P only. We'll ignore the change in N as a possibility. What we want is to know how H changes maybe with T and P, because T and P I can measure. I feel real confident in my ability to measure those. Now, if I do this and start saying, well, wait, I know how to use the definition of a differential. dH is dH dt at constant pressure times dt plus dH dp at constant temperature times dp. In terms of measurable quantities, dH dt at constant p is C sub p. But what about this dH dp at constant temperature? That's not in my list of measurable quantities. So let's start with this dH equals TDS plus VDP, okay? Back to the fundamental relation. And what we're wanting to find is use this to figure out what is dH dP at constant temperature. That was the question that we had from the previous slide. But I can use this with the fundamental relation to say that, ah, this is equal to T times dS dP at constant temperature, looking at the same change, plus V dP dP at constant temperature. Now, this first grouping maybe is not obvious to you what that means, but the second one, dP dP, how does pressure change with pressure? Well, that's one. So this 
is equal to T dS dP at constant temperature plus the volume. So, so far so good. I know this one. I still have this dS dP at constant temperature. So what is that? Well, go back and look through your list of Maxwell's. And sure enough, we have one that says that, oh, wait a minute, dS dP at constant temperature is negative dV dT at constant pressure. That's one of my Maxwell's. So therefore, dH dP at constant temperature is negative T dV dT at constant pressure plus the volume. So now everything here is in terms of things that are measurable. All right, so in our previous slides, we had found that dH is equal to C sub P dT plus dH dP at constant temperature dP, rewriting H as a function of temperature and pressure. And the dH dP at constant temperature we now have seen is equal to V minus T dV dT at constant pressure. If we want to use that isobaric compressibility, beta is 1 over V dV dT at constant pressure, then we can say that dH is Cp dT plus V minus beta VT dP, just using a little magic of rewriting things. So this concludes this example. We'll be doing more of these in class and in future lessons. Thank you.